Hey, Table Talk with Sid of the Day. I am sitting here wanting to toss this around with you as a discussion for a life memo, which is the power of the ability to give what you own and the downfall for the inability to give what you don't own. And I think it's an, a really powerful subject. I was in talking to uh, a friend of mine who's a surgeon yesterday. He happens to be the father to one of my daughter's little soccer mates. And my daughter had broken her arm about a week, a week and a half ago at a tournament. And so this father was kind enough to say, hey, let me help you out and come on in and we'll cast it up. And, you know, he and I had maybe said hello two or three times. And our daughters have been on the same soccer team on three different soccer teams, but we just never really have had a reason, I guess, to have conversation. So it was it was great to go in on his turf, to see him in action, to see him where he's comfortable because he has never been an arrogant man at all by any means. Just We've just never really had a lot to talk about, but to see him doing his thing, his specialty is athletes. He loves helping athletes mend. He loves surgery. He said he absolutely loves putting things back together to find ways to help the thing, whatever it is that he's putting back to, together, to be stronger after he's done with it than even maybe before it started. And he he just loves the opportunity to use his talents to help the community, to help people live the life they want to live and to live it in a healthy manner. And as we were having this discussion, I was asking him how long all of this took. When did he know he wanted to do this? I believe he said somewhere in his junior year of high school, he he really knew this was the direction he wanted to go and that he really has a passion for kind of the puzzle thing, putting things together, making them work, helping people be healthier than they were before. But the subject that we really started to talk about was the fact that as parents, and people who aren't even parents, who someday may become parents, that power of being able to give what you do not own. So if you do not know how to cherish thrive, love, and experience the talents that you have, your inability to maybe love your life, to see your value, to really figure out how to create the life you want to live. When a person doesn't know how to do that for themselves, it means they don't own that. They don't own that peace, that feeling of accomplishment, they don't own the journey of how to achieve and how to go after life and get what you want. They don't own those skills. So if you don't own them, you can't give them to your children. If you cannot offer that or gift that to your children, then your children only get what it is that you own. So if you only own the, the knowledge of fear, the inability of accomplishment, the lack of faith and worth within yourself. If you are a person that just lives life based upon, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to make it happen just because I have no other choice, I'm going to come home, eat, shower, go to bed and do it again, and you lack inspiration and passion for your life, if that is what you are accustomed to, that tells you that is what you own. If that is what you own, then that is what you gift or give your children. And when you gift and give those things to your children, that means that's all they're going to know because they only know what they're taught. So this powerful thing, as he and I were discussing this, is there is a peace within life when you figure out where you are gifted, what your personal value is for your life, for your children, for your community. When you figure out what makes you tick, 
So those things that make you tick are the things that you think about, and it can't have anything to do with religion, money, income, uh, the way you worship, the color of your skin, or your upbringing. When you think of something and it just gives you, you, your chest sort of picks up, your shoulders go back, you get a little perk, a little smile on your face, that is what makes you tick. When you figure out what makes you tick, then you know the direction that is meant for you. So I've said this before in podcasts, but I'm going to say it again. So it's regardless if you believe in life, God, or the universe. Uh, take this and, and make a visual thing and sort of take it with a grain of salt. But before you came down to this earth, you and your higher powers had a little sit down, a little discussion on what makes you amazing, what makes you unique, important, what makes you talented, what gives you value. And they they had this little discussion saying, these are the things that are going to bring value to the world, to your community, to the people that you're going to raise, your children. And so along in your journey, we're going to send you these things called ideas. Now you're going to call them ideas. We see them as our contract coming down to you saying, we haven't forgotten you. We know what our agreement is. And when these quote unquote ideas come to you, it is because we are spending our time up wherever you believe in heaven or somewhere in the universe, preparing your path. So as your path comes together, the right people have to be there at the right time, the correct stoplights, the correct hiccups, the correct, correct uh, downfalls, and the correct successes have to happen all at the right time. And so when all of these things come into line and everyone's prepared, we're going to send you this thing called an idea. When you give that idea, that is our hint to you that everyone's ready, that it's your moment to move forward with faith, with gratitude, with excitement, with motivation, with passion, doing whatever the first idea that comes to your mind. Now, that first idea that comes to your mind, that is your higher power speaking to you. Now, often people will say, but it was so backwards. What I feel like I'm supposed to do is backwards. And I say this all the time. Of course it feels backwards. Because majority of society lives backwards. Most people are living based upon what they can't do, what they can't have, what doesn't work, what they're afraid of. So if that's how majority of society lives, that is why majority of people are not happy, thriving, passionate people living the life they choose because you cannot, you cannot create brilliance peace, joy, happiness based upon what you can't have, what you can't do, where you can't go. So if people would start allowing their higher powers to do their job, because it's a crazy thing, but it is so true, your higher powers want, they, they feel this necessity for you to be successful because you being successful in the things you already have an agreement with them on, they have built this whole community, this whole world based upon you, your skill, your effort, the thing that you're going to bring value to this world on. So yes, it's a necessity for you to be successful so that the whole puzzle comes together. So as you are emotionally, spiritually, financially, and all of these other things physically prepared, these different ideas come to you according to where you are. All you're expected to do is to love who you are, to be excited about the journey, to see that the downfall really is not a downfall. The hiccups that you have within your journey, all that is called is rerouting. That's just your higher powers rerouting you because motion and progress is a must. So as you're moving along, sometimes poof, the, the wind in your sails has to leave so that God, life in the universe slows you down because you've accomplished something. You've done what you needed to do. They need to reroute you. 
So if more people could figure out how to love their life, live their life, find their passion, find what makes them tick, head towards what makes them tick, reach for it, love the journey about it, they would find, then they own that. When they own that journey and all of the experiences that go with that journey, they find that they end up going to where they want to go. And the most powerful thing is, is that your higher power says, ah, yes, you arrived, but you have been so educated. You have learned so much that there are even more things. There's greater things that you couldn't even see before because, you know, we are only human. We can only see what we can see, but they will gift you with more. They will allow you to experience more as you strive for that thing that you think is so perfect for you, yet the world and your higher powers have even a bigger plan for you. So we as parents, we as individuals, if we can learn to do this, not just for our children, for ourselves, for society, if we can learn to live the life we choose to live, loving it, thriving in it, having passion for it, enjoying the journey, seeing that the downfalls are not a downfall, they are a rerouting method, you will find you will love every day that you wake up. You will love the experience of the hiccup because you will realize, oh my gosh, it's not a problem. I just have to take a step back, take a breath, and take a moment where are they rerouting me? And then go again with passion, motivation, excitement, and this love for who you are. Okay, in your day, you may fall down, stand up, brush off, and move on. Talk to you.